Ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Boz. This is Boz Comics. And, uh, wow, well, I haven't uploaded here in a while. I've really got to stop saying that. Um, but the reason that I haven't been chomping at the bit to upload here is, uh, both... <laughs> it's both a large part of why I'm making this video... And it's also kind of, it kind of comes back around and, and contributes to the reason why I, I finally have started to feel like I need to be uploading here again. And as you have surmised, most likely, by reading the title, uh, we're going to dive into some discussion uh, that I've been putting off for a long time. Uh, namely... And some talk about Comicsgate. Ooh, Comicsgate. Mm, that's the uh, that's the movement with all the uh, the Nazis, right? And the uh, the white supremacists. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, for those of you who came in late, um, there's very little of that in Comicsgate, if there's any at all. Um, I have I have seen none of that myself. Um, I've seen some people who can be assholes. Uh, much like uh, you might find in, in any particular movement. But that's besides the point. Um, so for those of you who... <sighs> this channel is still in its infancy. It has seven subscribers at the time of this recording. Um, so there's a very good chance that a lot of you watching are not even comic book fans. You're just normies from my uh, real world life. You're just watching this shit to support me. So let me give you the super, 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 super quick uh, breakdown on what Comicsgate was. So Comicsgate started a couple of years ago uh, as a consumer revolt, much like Gamergate before it. It was a it was a response. It was a it was a pushback against um, a number of really kind of gross elements uh, taking over the mainstream comic book industry. Right. So. Um, ah, so a lot of people were noticing things like, uh, comic book fans, comic book fans were noticing, uh, a, a trend towards, uh, replacing, uh, traditional, uh, traditionally, you know, beloved, uh, characters, um, like, uh, Captain America or, uh, Spider-Man, um, oh God, uh, Thor, okay, like, and these are just some of the ones off the top of my head. Uh, Iron Man. Okay, there was a trend where these 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 icons, these heroes that have been loved for for years, certainly all my my life. I'm 30 years old now, um, so for the past 30 years, these are characters that I've loved, and uh, those characters were being replaced. And it was you could tell, like they these creators, they made no bones about the fact that they were pulling this move uh, purely for political reasons. Um, I, I don't even think that they thought that like uh that 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 these characters were, were going to sell books. I, I really don't think that was ever the, the goal. There's been a lot of, there's been lots of discussion had about, you know, uh, whether or not the end goal might have been to to destroy uh the comics uh comic book industry uh from within, you know, consequences be damned. I don't know if I'm ready to really bite into that narrative, but you know. <laughs> Take of that what you will. But uh, all these, like, traditional characters, they were being replaced with, um, you know, protect, you know, uh, people from protected classes, right? So, uh, Spider-Man, um, <laughs> Spider-Man had Miles Morales coming in, and, and whereas Miles had at one point been off in his own universe, taking over for Peter Parker after he died, you know... Then he started swinging around in the main universe, and several creators kind of tried to put the spotlight on Miles, saying that, you know, um, Peter's time had come and gone. You know, uh, my favorite superhero of all time, his his time had supposedly come and gone. And it was time to um, kind of push him aside. You know, now Miles is in the main universe, and we have to give him all our attention because he is... Uh, part black, part Hispanic. That That's the reason, because he's part black, part Hispanic. It's his turn. You know, uh, Thor 
um, was supplanted in his absence by Jane Foster. And uh, all kinds of commentary started coming into Thor comics, of all things, about feminism. Um, there's like this really um, infamous panel, right, where uh, Ares, I think, uh, starts going off about MRAs. It's so weird and uncomfortable. I'm like, what? what is happening right now? Um, oh, the Hulk. The Hulk. Uh, the Hulk is thought to be dead. Uh, Amadeus Cho is running around. Amadeus Cho is Asian. Um, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, Iron Man. Iron Man was, uh, I don't think the Iron Man was dead. I think he was in a coma, right? So instead we had Ree Ree Williams, the most awkwardly named character of all time, um, who was a teenage black girl and, and she took over, um, for Iron Man <laughs> for a while. Uh, I, I don't think she was ever called Iron Man. I think she was called Iron Heart from the beginning, but she, she was meant to be the Iron Man replacement. Um, of course, uh, for a while, I believe, uh, Sam Wilson, uh, the Falcon, uh, Black Man was the sole Captain America. You know, and, and the issue with comics fans that had an issue to begin with, it, it wasn't that there were these minority uh, characters uh, being brought in right? That was never the issue, no matter what people want to try to tell you. The The issue was that you had characters with decades of history behind them, and these new writers were coming in, and they were grandstanding, and they were trying to completely recontextualize the identity of these characters to push a modern uh, social agenda. Um, you know, uh, they, for nothing more than political gain, like gaining political ground in the hashtag culture war. Like, that's that's what this was all about. Um, and when fans would would push back against that, you know, and say, like, yeah, God, man, I... Ah. Oh, um, on top of that, by the way, uh, the art. The art was suffering horribly. The writing was suffering horribly. Um, I don't have uh, examples to show you, like, side by side, and, and that would all be really subjective, you know, besides... Uh, so you'll have to take my word for it or go out and read something from the 80s, 90s, the early 2000s, and then read something from now and judge for yourself. Right. Um, but the general consensus, at least among the comic skate crowd, um, was that uh, quality across the board, visually, writing wise, it was all go. It, it, it had gone downhill. Right. It had, it had not just gone downhill. It, it, it had plummeted into a vacuum with a very few exceptions. With very few exceptions. Oh, very few exceptions. Joe, learn to talk. Ah. Uh, okay, so, and then fans would push back against this, right? As you do, right? Because we live in the age of social media, and all these pros um, are readily available on Twitter, uh, you know, and, and they're largely bitching about their political leanings and not doing a whole lot of promoting their books. Um, but, you know... Um, they, they have this large following on social media networks because of who they are. And um, and so the fans reach out to them and they say, hey, like, we don't really like what's going on. The art is trash. The writing is is juvenile. And we feel like characters that we've loved for much of our lives are being, like, roundly uh, disrespected. And then it was like, well, Nazis go home. And it's like, wait, what? Yeah, I, I don't want Nazis like you buying my books. Like, oh, oh, <laughs> what? Um, so in response to that kind of gross, uh, treatment from the industry, uh, both, you know, the product just being trash and the, the behavior from, uh, pros becoming increasingly toxic, uh, comics gate, uh, forms, you know, it was just a hashtag movement. Um, I don't know for certain who actually started it. That is something I think will be debated about even now. Um, but key members that I remember from the very beginning were guys like uh, Diversity in Comics, who is now Comics Matter with your boy Zach. Um, Captain Cummings, who <laughs> saw the writing on the wall like maybe like a year or so ago and got the fuck out. I, I don't even know if he does YouTube anymore at all. Um but he 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 has jumped ship seemingly from the comics uh, scene, and I I don't even really blame him. It's really sad what happened to him. 
Um, I, I miss his content. I disagreed with him on a number of things, but I, I really miss his content. Um, but, you know, you had a Captain Cummings, you had, you had your boy, Zach. Um, let's see. Uh, England teen was big, right? From I love comics. Um, and, and there were a lot of other creators too, that I really kind of enjoyed. They weren't as big, but they're creators that I, I loved hearing their talk about, um, all the issues within the, uh, comics industry as it stood at the time, right? Like a uh, Mim Headroom. Mim Headroom was great. Um, ah, uh, fuck. Uh, Nerd Wonder. Uh, I don't even know if she still does YouTube, but Nerd Wonder, uh, had some great input. Um, one of my favorites was a guy named Unranked Chevron, who still makes videos very occasionally, it seems. But I miss him. I, I loved his takes. Uh, number one Marmaduke fan. Number one Marmaduke fan still makes content, and I it hasn't even changed that much, I feel. Uh, he hasn't done much mainstream comic stuff in a long time, but uh, but he, he still kind of travels in those orbits. Uh, let's see. Who else, who else was great? Uh, Weaponized Nerd Rage used to do a lot of comic uh, content. Doesn't really do it so much anymore. And you'll notice a trend here where we had these like great commentators that were sharing thoughts and ideas about like the way forward for this beloved art form. Um, and nowadays they don't really do it, you know, and you'd have to ask them like individually, like for what reason do you no longer um, tilt at this particular windmill, right? Um, but I think in a lot of cases it's, it's because, you know, it, at, at some point, Comics Gate kind of just transitioned away from this discussion about the merits of the medium, the way forward for the medium. Um, it's, it stopped being about saving characters we love and, and pushing back against toxic elements within the industry. Um, it's it stopped being about like uh, promotion of uh, the free exchange of ideas within the art form. Th these are things. These are things that I feel like Comicsgate was once emblematic of, and we've really gotten away from that. Um, and now in present day, see what happened is um, so Richard Meyer, uh, diversity in comics now. Comics matter with your boy Zach, who I still love very much. He's still pretty much doing his his bit. And I'm grateful that he's out there because, you know, uh, he's good at what he does. But he he kind of like lit a firestorm when he um, used his following to pursue one of his lifelong dreams. And he he crowdfunded uh, successfully this really fun 90s throwback comic uh, called Jawbreakers Lost Souls. Yeah, ugh. Jawbreakers Lost Souls. Um and it's a bunch of ex-superheroes turned mercenaries trying to save a giant ape from a tyrannical warlord. It's it's G.I. Joe with superpowers. And it's awesome. <laughs> like, it's just it's just great. Um, and. He faced a lot of mainstream opposition from that when he tried to, like, put out his comic book. Uh, there's a whole lawsuit going on right now. Um between him and Mark Wade, because Mark Wade was a little bitch and tried to uh, tortuously interfere with uh, Meyer's uh, publishing contracts uh, with Antarctic Press, um, seemingly successfully did so, uh, because Antarctic Press, after getting a nasty phone call from from Mark Wade, uh, seemed to just drop everything. Uh, they 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 ditched. They backed out of their contract. Um, so now Meyer is going after Wade in court. Sucks because once upon a time, I loved Mark Wade. <laughs> Kingdom Come was a great book, Mark. It sucks that you're such a garbage human. But, uh, anyway, so currently your boy Zach is, is going after, um, Mark Wade for interfering with his contract and also for defaming him by calling him things like a, a white supremacist and shit. Um, but anyway, so in spite of all that pushback, you know, uh, Meyer uh, was like, fuck it, I'm going to do it myself. And so so he struck out and, and he made uh, Jawbreakers a runaway success, in part because so many people um, took this as a no-you-move moment uh, to throw in a famous Captain America quote. Um, in fact, maybe I'll even make that um, a thumbnail for this video. I don't know, we'll see. 
But, uh, you know, uh, so many people were galvanized by these goings on and they flocked to support uh, Jawbreakers, including me. I, I have a copy of Jawbreakers on my uh, graphic novel shelf because I supported that comic happily. I'm really glad I did. Um, I've, I haven't been financially solvent enough these last couple of months, so I really hope I don't miss the boat on uh, Jawbreakers book two. Um, or I guess book three. He's got a confusing uh, numbering convention for his stories, but whatever. Um, God King is out there right now, and, and you should back it if you still can. Anyway, um, so Zach, you know, uh, Richard Meyer, we call him Zach, you know, your boy Zach. It's, it's a meme. It's a long story. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so Zach, uh, you know, is, is fighting Wade, right? Fighting for, for truth, uh, justice, and the right to pursue uh, capitalist ideals. <laughs> um, so, you know, people flocked to him and made Jawbreakers a roaring success. And I think that that is both one of the best and worst things that could have happened to Comics Gate. Because in its wake, uh, we saw a whole bunch of comic creators with talent who stepped up and they were like, oh shit, yeah, this is where it's at. We don't need mainstream comics anymore. Um, we can do our own thing. And it became less about commentary on the industry and trying to fight back and trying to save the things we love. Oh God, that was an accidental last Jedi quote. Uh, don't, don't hate me. I, I feel bad for what I did. Please forgive me. But uh, it, beca it became less about saving what we loved and uh, trying to find a way to get it back to trying to make a new haven for ourselves. Like fans who felt ostracized for not being um, far left uh, sock puppets right for 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 daring to be like um i don't care if riri williams is a young black girl she sucks she doesn't suck because she's a young black girl but she's not awesome because of it either give us back tony stark the guy with decades of history who we actually like um you know for daring to 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 say such things you know uh, a whole bunch of us were branded as undesirables right or a, a basket of deplorables you might say um <clears throat> so the people are like, fuck this, uh, we're going to make our own way. And they, they kind of use Jawbreakers as like an example. Now, there had been crowdfunding before, but as far as I know, like Richard Meyer was the first guy to come out of Comicsgate and be like, to, to, to lead the way, right? So now all these other people came in and they wanted a piece of that pie. And that's fair. If I could draw, I'm, I'm teaching myself to draw right now very, very, very slowly. You want to see something really sad and pathetic, watch a 30-year-old man drawing stick figures, trying to teach himself how drawing works. Um, if I could, could draw, though, I would have jumped on that, too. And maybe I will one day. Who knows? <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, people were, were, were coming in in droves, and they were, they were trying to get a piece of this pie. They were trying to jump into independent comics, using Indiegogo as a platform. Um, and chief among them was Ethan Van Skyver. And... Ethan Van Skyver is such a heartbreaking story, at least for me. Um, my perspective of Ethan Van Skyver was this guy who had a storied history in the mainstream comic book industry. Um, while he was still doing work for DC Comics, he slowly kind of got involved in this whole Comicscape movement because he said at the time he saw like lots of negativity and such. And he wanted to come on and, and make a YouTube channel. And, and he, in the beginning, really tried to stay out of drama. He tried to be neutral. He used to have, like, industry professionals come on his show and, and do really fascinating talks. He, uh, he used to give these really fucking fun, chill drawing lessons on his, on his, on his channel. Um, and he used to talk about, like, these insider stories about the realities of how... Um, of how the comics book comic industry works. And it was beautiful. I defended the guy so many times saying to others that he was quote, the Bob Ross of comics. Um, I didn't come up with that idea. Somebody else did, but it's, it's funny how things work out. Um, Ethan back in the day was such this like loving, like Papa bear sort of figure. And I, I know that he has like stalwart defenders who still think of him that way. And I'm, I'm not trying to take that away from, from them. Um, I'm, this is not a bash Ethan Van Skyver video. This, I don't think this is going to be a bash anyone video. This is just me lamenting where we've been versus where we are now. So Ethan, uh, Van Skyver, this, this, this storied professional in the comic book industry, um, 
After a while, he just kind of sees what's going on, and he jettisons himself from uh, DC Comics entirely, from mainstream comics entirely, uh, in the wake of Richard Meyer's um, Jawbreaker's success. And he just goes, yeah, I'm doing Cyber Frog now. It was one of my products, uh, projects, properties, that's the word, one of my properties from the 90s. Um, I'm, I'm relaunching it. I'm doing this thing. It's going to be great. Um, and he made, like I think, like three or four times what uh, Richard Meyer made. Um, which is fine. It's good. It's great. But now, at that point, like that really like seemed to put a nail in the coffin for what um, Comics Gate was. See, now we had somebody successful, charismatic, um, like Ethan Van Skyver at the helm of everything. Uh, and once that started to happen, Ethan started to change. Right, um, gone was the soft spoken. Uh, Bob Ross esque uh, presentation. Uh, now he's like kind of loud, and he comes off as a bit arrogant, um, and uh, he seems to be all about that money, which is fine, I guess. I'm not trying to say that he doesn't have the right to pursue financial gain, right? It's just it's sad seeing what was versus what is now. <laughs> And he has tons of supporters who love everything about him. He has he has legions following him. But I think, uh, personally, it was Zach's success followed by EVS uh, monumentally moving to the front of the line and uh, leaving behind his Bob Ross persona in favor of being Caesar. That's a whole thing that would take too long for me to get into. But uh, I, th I think all that combined is what really shifted Comicsgate into what it is now. Now it suddenly now it's like Comicsgate is about giving a platform for conservatives who have not felt at home or safe uh, being who they are in the industry. Uh okay. And then you had some people that were saying like Comicsgate is a place to get away from politics and stories and then you had other people saying it's a platform for conservative politics. Ha. <sighs> and then you had people fighting over those conflicting ideals, right? And then you had people saying, Comicsgate should be what it was. It should be about um, a free exchange of ideas. It should be about trying to save what was in the industry. Uh, it should be about critiquing uh, books in favor, in, in the pursuit of, of lighting a fire under the industry's collective ash and, and ushering back in a new wave of quality. And you have other people saying, no, it should be about like forcing, like leaving all the garbage behind and... Um, and bringing in our, our new breed of better, uh, sleeker, uh, more uh, better tailored to the customer's taste, you know, uh, all these new books, right? That's what it should be about. And that just gave rose, rise to all this fighting because nobody could fucking agree about what Comicsgate meant anymore because Comicsgate was largely a leaderless movement, although Ethan does seem to claim that he is the leader of Comicsgate whenever it's fucking convenient. And then will just as readily turn around and say like I I don't I I am not comics gate and and uh, oh, Jesus Christ leaderless movements always go bad one way or the other um <laughs> but uh yeah so that's that's kind of the I gave a really kind of rambly but hopefully somewhat effective uh breakdown of comics gate as I see it I've gone on for Fuck me. Audition says 23 minutes now. Um, and I guess in all this, it just makes me really depressed, right? Because because tonight I was on comics Twitter and I was uh, following uh, a conversation that I guess had been started by EVS and EVS had just kind of said something snarky about Englantine, who, like I said, way back at the start of this rant, was was one of the OG Comicsgate people, right? Um, and he was responding to somebody else. I don't, I don't even remember. Twitter is a nightmare. It's impossible to keep track of everything going on at all times. But, uh, you know, EVS was, was, whether he meant to or not, he was throwing a bit of shade at Englantine, saying, like, uh, I don't even know who Englantine is, or I don't care about Englantine, or, or whatever. And a couple of us, including myself and Tristan from Nerdit's uh, newsstand, a couple of us, that made us like wince, you know, and we're like, oh, God, that was, dude, what the fuck? Like, um, this is from the guy who used to say that Comicsgate was all about love and understanding within the comic book industry. 
Um, you know, and so we kind of got into a thread and we were talking back and forth about like, I miss how comics gate used to be. And, and, and now it's just, I had said, um, that I felt as though I, I felt as though mainstream comics was a, was a home that became unsafe. It was a place where I was no longer welcome. So I was kind of like forced out of it. And so then I took up root in comic skate because I thought that that was going to be a good place for me. Like I thought that's where I was going to kind of be able to learn to love comics again. And I, I did, but my love for comic skate didn't like continue forward along with it, I guess. Um, because comic skate just became another unpleasant environment because now it just seems to be about capitalism and nothing else. It's not about that free exchange of ideas. It's not about trying to bring back the glory of, of characters that have meant so much to me and help shape the man I am today. Um, it's, it's not about critique. It's not about criticism. It's, it's, it's not about celebrating the art form. It's all a bunch of people getting together, trying to build platforms to inevitably launch their comic books on Indiegogo to make a whole bunch of money. And then inevitably there's going to be all this bickering and back fucking stabbing because people are like, well, I'm not getting enough promotion. Not enough people love me. I'm not ready to suck EBS's dick. And for that reason, I, I can't be successful in comic skate. Yada, yada, yada. Like... My, my book will never be successful because I'm not willing to bend the knee to Caesar. Like all this stuff. Ah, I don't even care about like who's right or who's wrong. I'm just so sick of the, I'll say it. Comic skate is not that much better than mainstream comics. That's what this video is all about. Comic skate has become what mainstream comics was. And I think too many people are too wrapped up in their own bullshit to, to notice, uh, <laughs> we didn't win. Everybody likes to say, oh, Comicsgate won against mainstream comics. We, we won by making our own place. Yeah, well, our own place is just, it's, it's by and large, just like there are a few bright spots still in mainstream comics. Like, for example, right now, right? I personally think that the current run of Spider-Man, which is what I care about the most, I think that's doing pretty great. Nothing for me will likely ever top the JMS run, but the current run from Nick Spencer, not everything is a home run for me, but a lot of it is really good. I'm having fun. The Absolute Carnage story, right? That's really fun. I'm enjoying myself. The stuff going on with Venom. That's cool. And fucking Hickman, man. Fucking, fucking, fucking Hickman, like, got me to care about the fucking X-Men. The, the whole House of X, Powers of X thing. I'm so here for it. I'm, I'm excited about the fucking X-Men. The last time I cared about the X-Men was the 90s cartoon. <laughs> okay? So there are bright spots within the mainstream comic book industry. It's not all trash. Um, fucking, fucking Immortal Hulk is cool too. Even though Al Ewing uh, has me blocked on Twitter, presumably because of block bots. Fuck my life. Um, right? But there are bright spots within the mainstream industry. And then on top of that, though, you look at Comicsgate. <laughs> yeah, we're getting a lot of these, like, cool fucking books coming out of Comicsgate. But, like, people don't seem to care about each other. It's just a bunch of people climbing over one another to try to get their fucking Indiegogo off the ground. That's all it feels like sometimes. It's not much better. It, it has become mired in its own swath of politics and infighting and backstabbing and, and tattletaling and gatekeeping. It's no different. It's a cracked mirror version of the mainstream comic book industry. And it breaks my fucking heart because that's not what I thought this was going to be. <laughs> I... This is my home. Comic books. This is my home. I don't care if it's fucking ridiculous for like a 30 year old man to speak this way about an art form. I don't care. Okay. I'm, I'm happily married. I've got things in my life to be proud of. Okay. I, I have a future ahead of me. I'm not worried. Okay. I am secure in my love of things that matter to me. Comics, comic books are one of those things that matter to me a great deal because it kept me from fucking killing myself as a child. Okay. I would not be who I am today without comic books, especially not Spider-Man. Uh, thank God for Nick Spencer. 
pulling my favorite character out of the fucking cesspit that Dan fucking Slot left him in. Fuck you, um, you know, Otto Blocktavius. Go fuck yourself. And I thought Comicsgate was going to be about, like, pushing forward on momentum like that and making comics better. You guys need to open your eyes. You have not made comics better. You have done nothing. Nothing has been accomplished outside of offering an alternative. Nothing has changed. It's just, do you want this dumpster fire over here or this dumpster fire over here? Take your pick. They both taste like shit. The difference is that Comicsgate seems to have more fucking quality. That's pretty fucking good. There's good quality products. But all the fucking machinery behind the scenes, it's all rusted and stagnant and gross, just like the machinery over in mainstream comics. It's no different. It's just a different flavor of garbage. It's a different flavor of shit. You know, and and it just that comic skate shit just happens to be wrapped in bacon. That's the only difference. That's what it is. Right. Mainstream comics is is shit. And and comics gate is shit wrapped in bacon. I didn't even realize that, that that's how I felt until just now. That's one of the few advantages to doing unscripted rants like this. But it 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 hurts me. Because it's just a bunch of fucking people arguing about politics. Nobody nobody cares about books anymore. Other than their own. Nobody gives a shit. It's arguing over fucking right-wing politics, owning the libs, and, and fucking just trying to fucking say that somebody should have sucked my dick, um, but they didn't, so I'm not going to suck their dick, and, and we're all going to block each other, and um, you, you're a bigot, um, you, you, you champion the rainbow, fucking Doug Tenapel and his bullshit, uh, you know, uh, you are godless heathen, you are a lunatic Christer, blah, blah, blah. It's all shit. You're all children. And I just want, I just want good books. But I know what you're going to say. I, j- I said that, right? I just said, like, I just want good books. And you're going to say, well, you, s- you said that Comicsgate was producing, like, good... Comicsgate was producing good product, and it is. But you know what? No, I take it back. I don't just want good books. I do want good books. But I, I want the community to be better than it is. It's not, you know, I can always fucking buy the books. I can always pirate the books if I want them that badly, right? But what you can't fucking just materialize is the community. You need the community. Like, comic books are, are a niche market still, even in the wake of these gargantuan blockbuster movies that I've hated for years. Um, you need that community. Well, that community sucks on both ends of the spectrum at this point. That's the thing that hurts the most. It's not a place to call home anymore. It's, it's not an escape. Everybody on the comics gate side who likes to say, oh, comics, comics should be an escape. It's not just the comics that are supposed to be the, the escape. It's the community and the community sucks. One side's the fucking Titanic and the other side is the goddamn Hindenburg. Everything sucks. We're all going down. Nothing has changed. It's just, do you want your plain shit or do you want your shit wrapped in bacon? And I'm tired of it and I don't know where we go from here. I just, I want things to be better. I want, I want the infighting to stop. I want the comic skate civil war, or I guess the comic book civil war to fucking end. I want creators to to respect and appreciate their fans. I want good quality products. I want people to feel like they can come together and and just talk about thoughts and ideas and hopes and dreams and and everyone can fucking get along. And I know that in no universe is that going to be the 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 result all the time. I'm not a fucking idiot, much as I'm sure some people will call me for this video. Uh, but I don't know. I just, I just, things don't feel good anymore. I don't feel like we're winning. I feel like we just fucking segregated ourselves to our island and now we're busy just killing each other. And it fucking sucks and I... Ugh. I don't know, maybe I won't even post this. I can't make up my mind. We'll see. But I feel a little better now that I got all that off my chest. (laughs) 
Uh, new video coming either tomorrow or the next day. I haven't decided what it'll be, but it will most likely be shorter, and it will probably be, um, a little bit more positive. We'll see. Maybe I'll review something from my collection tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, if you somehow made it through this entire fucking half hour plus, uh, you are a champion, and, um, you just, you, you're awesome. Uh. Sub, I guess, if some element of this impassioned lunatic rant appeals to you. Hit the bell for notifications, all that shit. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.